Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Lorelei Sims was born on June 5th, 1986. She died, or at least her disappearance was reported, on June 17th, 1986. She was 12 days old. The testimony will be that she died as a result of homicidal violence. Heather Sims was born on March 18th, 1989. Her disappearance was reported on April 29th. She was six weeks old, and her death was a result of homicidal violence. But what you're about to hear, ladies and gentlemen, is a fairy tale. It's close to a fairy tale as you can get in a murder case. This fairy tale is about a roving Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> So what did the doctor say? Come on, you can't fool me. Yeah. <laughs> You're pregnant. I knew it. I could just tell by the look on your face. <laughs> well, come on, get out of this truck. I won't give you a big old hug. <laughs> <laughs> Rob waited. Maybe I better go tell him first. All right, go on. He's the one that done it to you. <laughs> I'll come back later, Minnie, after he's gone for work. Okay. I thought I was done with these. Thank you. You're a lifesaver. Well, that's the least I could do. You know, you got yourself a, a considerate husband there. Driving down in this god-awful storm, picking up railroad ties for that damn retaining wall. Hey, it's uh, wet out there. Why, why, why don't you come in? Come on. You sure? Don't be silly. Thanks. Oh. Oh. So how long do you think the boys will be gone? Baby's gonna live in these things. Really, you think I got enough? Oh, well, honestly, I can't think of a thing that you don't have. So, 
Do you know if it's going to be a boy? No, I don't know. Well, I don't know what you're going to do with yourself for the next five months, because you've done it all. Oh, you have just done it all. Well, I guess I'll be doing a lot of praying for a healthy baby. Oh, I wish this rain would let up. When you come into bed. Soon. That's what you said an hour ago. Gotta get it right. It's just a plan for the retaining wall. It's not the wall. If the plan's not right, the wall won't be right. Push hard, Paula. That's it. You've got to push harder. Push harder, Paula. All right. Yes, that's it. There we are. It's a girl. She pretty. She's just an angel. You want to hold her? I'd love to. Oh. Yeah. Oh. oh, I have been so busy. I haven't even had a chance to open your present yet. I oh, you do Robert returned to work. He'd taken some time off. He worked swing shift at a factory, and this week it was nights. So on the night of June 17th, Paula is home alone. Her neighbors, Don and Minnie Gray, are home. They're watching the 10 o'clock news. He's recovering from a hernia operation. It's hot. The windows are open. Oh, I'm beat. How are you feeling? Beat. Degrees all the way up to 88 degrees. And you know what? By Thursday, we're going to be running right around 93 degrees. I'm meteorologist Mike Roberts, and that is your weather. As he always did, he stopped in the kitchen for a glass of water. Off to the left, he could see down his neighbor's long driveway, all the way to the house. Nothing stirred. There wasn't a sound in the warm night. Don? Yeah. 
bathroom light burned out. You should change it before you go to yeah. bed. Night, man. Night, man. What do you want? Oh, help me, please, let me in. That is the home I baby. That is the home my baby. That is the home my baby. Who did? What are you talking about? I was downstairs watching the news, and suddenly, suddenly there's a man on the steps wearing a mask. He has a gun and he tells me to lie on the floor for ten minutes or he'll kill me, so I did. And then when I heard the front door close, the screen door, I ran after him and that's when I saw she was gone, my baby. He had taken her out of the bassinet. She was gone. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> and then I went outside and I could see a shadow running down the driveway. I could hear footsteps on the gravel, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I chased him out to the road. But I couldn't see him. He just disappeared. <laughs> Where? You gotta call the police. Where is he? Wait. Uh, I gotta call Rob. Yeah, I know. Wait a minute, Paul. I, as soon as I get off the phone, we'll call Rob from here, okay? I, I don't remember his number at work. I gotta get his number at work. Can't go back there. Just wait. You don't know who's back there. Paul, I'm Damn it! Hey, Don. Forgot you lived out this way. Hey, Frank. Sims family. You know them? Nice kids. Minnie knows them better. She's up there now. You see anything? Not a thing. Hear anything? Just the night. It's strange. Yeah. In my 14 years, I've had a few abductions, but never an infant. Who do something like this? You better get out of those striped pajamas, Don. State police might take you for an escapee. State police? This place is gonna be a zoo. over there. I asked him to step outside. I wanted to make a last run through the house. What'd you find? A slit on the screen door the size of a worm. Front porch. An empty bassinet. What'd she have to say? Somebody stole my baby. Mm -hmm. Well, you try. The woman's incoherent. What's the step, Frank? Mrs. Sims, I'm Frank Yoakum, Jersey County Sheriff. <laughs> Minnie, why don't you get some air? Mrs. Sims, I know you're upset and I hate doing this to you. I know you've been over all this with the other officers, but I'd like for you to tell me what happened. You say it was about 10.20 p.m. when the gunman appeared. Had you just looked at your clock or how do you remember exactly? No, the weather. Like I said, I was watching the news and that's what time the weather comes on. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> you know what kind of gun it was? Just a gun. Was it black or silver colored? I think it was black colored. What about the man? What? What 
color was he? White. I think he was white. White man, black gun. You think it was a revolver he had? <clears throat> did, did he look like this, or was it an automatic? I don't know. It was just a gun. I'm sorry. Never mind. <laughs> It's okay, ma'am. That, that, that's okay. What about his voice? You think you could identify it? You know, it was just a regular voice. You say he was wearing a ski mask. Did he have on gloves too? I don't know. I don't remember. Oh wait, yeah. I think he did have gloves on. I think he did. You wouldn't happen to remember what kind? Of it. I'm Robert Sims. Oh, I got here as fast as I could. I was shaking so bad I couldn't even drive. I, I, I had to go to Dave's, have him drive me the rest of the way. Here's this other flashlight. Should I talk to him? Let's uh, bring in the dogs. Call DCI. Tell Donovan you were the best canine unit they got. I keep doing it too. I ought to put a sign on the damn thing. One of the kidnapper tripped. He's wearing a mask running with an infant. Maybe he'd been here before. Just checking the grounds. Has anybody touched this thing? No, sir. Blankets were folded just like they are now. Yes, sir. I was the first one on the scene. the FBI? Not yet. Well, why not? There's no jurisdiction for them yet. Have you set up roadblocks? That wouldn't do much good. You got a lot of country roads leading out of the area, and you got a major highway less than a mile and a quarter from here. So put a car in every road. You can't stop every car. Well, you could try. You could damn well try. What about helicopters? You got helicopters? We got everything under control, Mr. Sims. Yeah, well, it doesn't sound to me like you do. What's he sniffing me for? He needs to get your scent. That's how he works. So he can distinguish you from the kidnapper. Yeah, well... The kidnapper's long out of this county now with my Lorelei. That's why you haven't gone and set up roadblocks, right? I'm sure you notified the airport. Well, why don't you go comfort your wife? She needs you now more than I do. Yeah, well, I tell you, I'd like to. But they still got her in that dang basement questioning her. I don't know what's taking so long, but... They want me to hang out here. I mean, what, what am I... 
What the hell am I supposed to do? I don't know, Mr. Sims. Right now, I don't have an answer for you. Never did catch your name. I'm gonna check up here along the Bivens. Agent Bivens. FBI? DCI. Division of Criminal Investigation, Illinois State Police. Did your dog bark when the gunman came in? No. When you chased the kidnapper to the road, did you hear any other sounds like his feet slapping on the asphalt or a vehicle, perhaps? No. You know your place is immaculate. How come nothing is disturbed? I guess he just took what he wanted. Mrs. Sims, we're looking for a motive here. Now, you say neither you or Robert have any enemies? Not that I know of, but you could ask him. Well, we'll do that. But, uh, do you or your husband ever use any kind of drugs? It's okay if you tell me. I mean, uh, we're not gonna bust you. Yeah, I know. Sure, we smoke a joint every once in a while, but that's it. But that's fine. That's okay. No harm in blowing a little, a little weed. recreational use. Right. What I'm getting at, you ever deal? Sell drugs. Even just, uh, recreationally speaking. Good Lord, no. I swear to you, um, no. You ever cheat on your husband? Has he cheating on you? <coughs> Told you to quit that smoking! <coughs> Is there anything else you can tell us? Mr. Sims? I don't know. Anything? Robert Sims. Come with me, please. Captain Philip Cochise. How you holding up? He went over there. Glad to see you're here. Kidnapping's kind of a rare crime. Right, More so than most people think. After you. You say you got up when you heard the gunman lead through the front door, right? But you didn't hear that door when he entered? Is that correct? Mm. Well, we could talk in my workshop. Yes, sir. We were thrilled with Lorelai's birth. We waited a long time, I mean, to start a family. Once we decided why, she got pregnant right away. Very first month we tried. How was Lorelai when you brought her home from the hospital? I mean, she's a healthy baby, right? No health problems. No, no, none at all. She was fine, just fine. You know, like babies are. They wake up a lot. Sure, they wake up. Me, go potty, get changed. But the biggest part of the time, they just sleep. How did she sleep last night, Mr. Sims? Well, like I said, I worked the midnight shift. See, the shift is from 11 to 7, but I got to relieve the man on the job at 10.30. So what time did you leave for work tonight? Tonight, I had to run a couple of errands. So I left one hour and ten minutes earlier than I normally do. That would be about 8.20. What kind of errands? You say you had some errands. Well, I had to return a mobile for the baby. It's one of those musical ones, you know. We had bought it for her, but we got another one exactly like it from my Aunt Dottie. And we needed some baby nipples and a garden weasel and a flashlight. But say garden weasel? for Paula to use around the flower beds. Mm. 
Well, you know, it's it's one of those things you roll them back and forth, and they they break up the, the soil. Uh huh. I know what they are. I, I live on a farm. Oh, oh, do you? Well, they're on sale now, adventure. Except they ran out, and wouldn't you know it? I go to Save Mart. They don't stock them, and they're out of flashlights too. Well, I'll be damned. They gave me a rain check. I got it right here. See? Still got to give it to me for the sale price. Look, tell me about a fight at work. Tell me about a motive for this. Tell me somebody scratched your car, hit up on your wife, or bit your dog. Because there has got to be a reason for this. So you just tell me something. Did I tell you about the nurse? No. I must have told your guy Bivens. Yeah. Well, when Lorelai was born, the nurse said, I'd like to steal that baby. Do you think she was serious, Robert? Oh, I'm sure she was. Just joking. Nothing. It'll be easier when the sun comes up. You could hear a cricket cut loose. <laughs> How could she not hear that screen door slam? It's like from Ma and Pa Kettle's farm. Yeah. Mother with a newborn. Hell, they hear things sometimes that aren't there. How come no one heard her? She ran right past the Graves' property chasing a gunman. Chasing a shadow. Yeah, right. Hot on the heels of a shadow. Look, I don't care what the hell it was. If it had a gun and my kid, I'd be hysterical. Nah, I'd be rabid. That's what you're gonna fight. You're gonna have to fight how you'd be. Look, Captain, the last thing I'd want to do is get a preconceived notion of any case. I don't like making a fool of myself. But if you don't mind, I'm gonna pray we find that baby alive. Frank. We're going to need to set up headquarters in town. I was thinking, your place. You know, I had a feeling you were going to say that. Always my place. Stillskin. You can't see him, you can't hear him, trained dogs can't smell him. And when he does interact somewhere, he doesn't leave a trace. Like I was saying, I can relate, man. I got four kids of my own. I got two. She never had one kidnapped. Nope, you got me there. And I don't pretend to know what that's like. But I did have a wife die in my arms once, lost to the cancer, and our girls were very young. Must have been tough. Yeah, still is. But we're doing everything we can to find Lorelai, Mr. Sims. Yeah, well, when are you going to bring the FBI into this? When Frank and I decide to bring in the big boys, we'll bring them in, okay? You see, Robert, it's just that we got a lot of manpower on this, and we're doing everything you can think of. Aerial searches, dogs, you name it. We swept the lake with that sonar boat. Yeah, well, I didn't think she'd be at the bottom of the lake. I mean, 
Why would the kidnapper throw her into the lake? Well, now you see, that's just it, Robert. We don't know how this man thinks. Who knows how he thinks? But the thing is, we're pulling out all the stops on this one. And damn it, we're coming up empty. Without any witnesses or other evidence, I mean, doggone. Uh, I think we need to settle some things here, Robert. Shift any doubt people might have away from you. Polygraphs, huh? Right. What'd you tell him? I told him we would do anything to help get our baby back. We just want her back. You're not eating, Paula. You gotta eat. seat over there, please. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, Trudy, you can't come in here. I'm her mother. Well, I know that. I understand that, ma'am, but you can't come in here. Surely you must have known that. If I'd known that, wouldn't I have come prepared with a magazine or something? Well, now, there's a five and dime just right across the street over there. John, show Paula's mother the way out. All I had was diet. That's fine. You like to hunt? No. Did you give your baby away, Paul? No. Oh. Did you sell your baby? No. Did you dispose of your baby? No. <clears throat> Have you falsified or withheld any information from police? you know where your baby is now? Mr. Sims, on Tuesday evening, June 17, 1986, was your baby, Lorelei Sims, alive and in your home when you left for work? Yes. Some bad news for you, Paula. You're being deceptive. What do you mean? What do I mean? I mean, if I ask what color my jacket is and you say black and I'm wearing blue, that means you're lying. Unless you're colorblind, of course. I'm not. I was just nervous, but I told the truth, I swear. Paula, I think it's time. You flunked. You lose. 
Not one question, not two questions, but every single question you bombed. Then the polygraph is wrong because I told the truth. Polygraphs don't lie, Paula, but people do. Look, if it was an accident or something, if you accidentally dropped her or whatever, we can work with you. I mean, accidents happen. That's why they're accidents. That didn't happen. We can end this right now, Paula. I mean, maybe you were sleeping with her and rolled over on her and didn't know what to do. And you just panicked. No. Or maybe it was sudden infant death syndrome. No. Or maybe she choked on some food. No. The dog? Yeah, the dog. Yeah, maybe the dog crawled into the bassinet and laid on her. Shadow would never do that. What about Robert? What about Robert? Did Robert do something accidentally? We can handle that, too. There's nothing to handle. Either you did it, or he did it, or both of you did it, but we're gonna put somebody in jail here. Stop it. And tell us what did happen, Paula. Tell us the truth. I have told you the truth again and again. If you think you're gonna go into court and make a bunch of people believe some bandito came into your house, he could have picked any house in the world. There's billions of kids running around, but he chose yours, and you're not rich, and you don't sell dope, and you're such a nice gal, you're nuts. Because nobody, including your dog, would believe you! Paula, now listen. We know Lorelai's dead. You know Lorelai's dead. She's out there somewhere. Please help us find your baby. Help us find her, for God's sake. Give her a Christian burial. What about it, Paula? What about it? That's enough! She can't take any more! <sighs> Look what you've done to her! Look at her! Come on, Paula! You ought to be ashamed of yourself! Damn it! How the heck? Hazelwood! Hazelwood! I just went to the bathroom for a second. Oh, man! No. Pick us up in the back. I don't want to run into the sheriff, that's why. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I said I don't know. Now hurry up, all right? Your father wanted to know how you did on your test. Why are they doing this to us, baby? Why are they doing this? I don't know, Mama. I don't know. They could have taken anything I own. They could have burned my house down. They, they could have cut my arms off, but nothing can take the place of our baby. Mr. Sims. Mr. Sims. Mr. Sims, what do you think the motive is? Do you think she was sold on the black market? It's been suggested the kidnapping report is false. Would you comment on that? I can't believe you people would start that crap. If you're looking for sensationalism, why don't you just go someplace else? No. What about the polygraphs, Mr. Sims? What were the results? Passed with flying colors. I'll tell you what you can color, you son of a bitch. You can color my ass. That's what you can color. You lying no You say something, Jimmy? Only half of what I'm going to say. You're not talking to the press. No, first I'm talking to him, then I'm talking to the press. Regulation bars us from commenting on polygraph tests. Now, you know that. You tell me, Captain, what regulation bars me from commenting on a baby killer? We got a town full of worried mothers out there thinking at any minute some whacked out gunman's going to snatch their baby you away. You cannot confirm or deny they've even taken the test, let alone what the results are. You know... A sheriff don't have those regulations. And today, Sheriff Yoakum confirmed that the Sims had indeed taken polygraphs. However, when asked if he could confirm Robert's claim that they had passed those tests, the sheriff had this to say. Hell no, I won't confirm that. Are you saying they failed? With flying colors. Both of them. Weird. Just plain weird, as all his co-workers described it. 
I'd say he's a chronic complainer. He seems to have a problem with blacks, especially women. God, where's the waitress? Come on, what's the matter? Tastes like dishwater. So anyway, this one gal I talked to had a desk next to Roberts. He used to harass the hell out of her. Where the hell is this girl? Ma'am? Ma'am? Her name's Mildred. Yeah. She'd get up and leave her desk for a minute, go to powder her nose or whatever. He'd sneak into her lunch bag. She'd come back, bite into her bologna sandwich, thinking it tastes kind of rubbery, right? Checks it out, it's a used condom. I'm sorry, I'll tell the cook. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> so she'd bite into her sandwich the next day, crunch cockroach. Damn. Kind of guy you'd like to bring home to mom. So, what the feds pick up on her? She had a brother she idolized. They were teenagers. He was driving one night, she's sitting beside him. He crashes head on into another car, ricochets into a tree. Now she escapes with a few scratches. He dies of a crushed skull. They say it uh, really affected him. No kidding. Speaking of feds, they want to take a crack at the Sims. Yeah, in their next lifetime. They think they can break them. What are we, morons? We can break this case. We don't need them. It's already set up for tomorrow. You just have to get the Sims there. It'll give you another chance to run through the place. I mean, a complete top-to-bottom search. And you won't have that dingbat Robert breathing down your back. Morning, Robert. How would you like a chance to get the FBI involved? Did I tell you Robert had a prior? Who what? Shoplifting. Two screwdrivers and a chain for a chainsaw. Chainsaw? No, it's not human. How do you know? Because if it was, he'd creep up real slowly. He doesn't like getting too close to death. It's sort of like a danger thing with him, you know? And this, he left for. It's pot. Nah, it's just residue. What? No, uh, there's a few papers, a couple of clips. Not even a roach. No, Captain, no seeds. There's enough to be obvious, not enough for a charge. Another one of his mind games. Yeah, mind games. He wants to challenge me. Yeah, me, you, us, the FBI, the whole damn system. Her. Well, I think he's got some kind of mind control over her, too. What happened with the feds? Get me to a bar, Frank. I need a drink. What? What happened? What happened is we don't have a case. What am I talking about? We don't even have enough for a warrant. Feds couldn't shake them, huh? In all their infinite wisdom, no. Well, well. Look, let's face it. We've been had. They beat us, man. They beat us. You know, I was just talking to Donovan, and he was telling me... this. They asked him about the polygraphs. Know what he says? Other than lying about the lie detector test, I've been completely honest. Hell. Yeah, it's about what it amounts to. Speak of the devil. Look, I gotta get out of here. Hey, I still think we should take another look around these grounds, because Don... Fine, Frank, you do that, but I can't look at those Archie eyebrows of his. I see those, I tell you, I'm gonna lose it. I'll rip them right off his face. Now, damn it, Jimmy, listen to me. I feel the same way. We're all mad. But that baby hasn't been found yet. And until she has, that's the only case there is. Now, 
what I've been trying to tell you is, I spoke to Donovan. He told me about a man who'd been missing in the woods over in Pike County for days. The dog went in and found him hanging in a tree. Those woods in the back, weren't the dogs ever down there? I don't know. You know, it's real thick back there. Maybe it was easier for him just to go around. Besides, we were looking for a kidnapper. Who ran that way. No, I wouldn't go down there. Woods are full of poison ivy. I don't think dogs get poison ivy, Robert. I think old Judd will be all right. Find dead. All right, let's go. And on Tuesday, June 24th, Lorelei Marie Sims was found, 150 feet from the house in which she once lived. Due to the heat and decomposition, all that remained was a skeleton and a skull with a patch of red hair. Murder. That was Rumpelstiltskin's motive for kidnapping. Which means he would have had to grab the baby, run to the back of the house, murder the baby on the way, dump the body, and then run back to the front of the house and be a shadowy figure disappearing down the driveway. But fairy tale figures can do anything, and the Sims stuck to that story. And the Jersey County State's Attorney could not bring charges because he did not have proof beyond a reasonable doubt as to the identity of the killer. And so little remained of Lorelei's skeleton that the cause and mode of death could not be determined. The Sims moved away to a new home in a new county ten miles from the last and started on a new family. They idolized their son. His name was Danny. Oh, Danny's getting to be a big boy. Oh, hello, hello, we're going to have a birthday. We're going to have a birthday in two days. Let's put the bucket on your head. You want to play with the bucket? Oh, look how funny you are. Oh. Paul, don't do that, Paul. Boom. Boom. You do that. Boom. Boom. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Mommy's going to get you. Danny has a birthday. Danny has a birthday. One year It's okay. Good day. Yeah. One cake? It's a birthday cake. 
Would you like it? You don't well, like it? Well, how does he know if he likes it? Why don't you put it in his mouth, Paula? And you know, we're expecting a baby in less than two months. Yeah, you're going to have a little or a brother or a little sister. Hi. Didn't forget about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's so pretty. Let me see. How you feeling? See you in about 30 minutes. Hello, Jacob. Hello. Say hey to Heather. Hey, Heather. Jacob says hi. <laughs> Hey, maybe one day when they're all grown up, they'll meet and become boyfriend and girlfriend. Same birthdays, same hospital. And then they find out we were roommates. Being neat, you know. Like, what's that called? Um, fate, you know? That'd be neat. But I doubt it. Oh, I'm so sore. Yeah, natural childbirth's a bitch. I thought you had C-sections both times. I did with Danny and Heather. But I had me another girl once. What happened? And Paula told her tale about Lorelei. But who could imagine that Rumpelstiltskin would strike the same family again? Set up, robots. They took my daughter. I look. They took my other daughter. I, 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 all right, all right. Just, just calm down. Oh, come on, man. You gotta get it going. You gotta set it up. Wait, wait. Set what up? The roadblocks immediately. Trails get cold mighty quick. Wait, what trails? They kidnap her. Who's that? That. That's that's Paula. She'll she'll tell you what happened. I uh. I wasn't here. Um. How, how do you get around the fence? Uh, uh, here. And amazingly enough, the second story parallels the first story. But it's changed a little bit. Because now we're dealing with an experienced killer. Did you see a car? No. Nobody sees the car. Did you hear a car? No. Nobody hears a car. Did you see the offender? Nobody else sees this person. And she couldn't really describe him because... He was wearing dark clothes and a ski mask, and he had a gun. And what does he do with this gun? He pointed it at me and told me to get back in the house. You were standing right here? Yes, and I turned and I went in here through the kitchen. And the fairy tale figure marches in and he strikes her? On the back of my head right here. Uh, with the gun? No, it, it felt like his hand, like, like this. Oh, karate chop. That's what it felt like to me. Then what happened? And it knocked me out, and I was unconscious until... Now, isn't that convenient? She was unconscious until... I come home, and, and I find her laying face down on the floor. Her eyes were closed. I mean, I thought she was dead. Except, except her color looked fine at a glance. And, and when I touched her hand, her hand was warm. So, so I, I, I shook her. And I said, I said, Paula, Paula, what's the matter? But I couldn't rouse her. Then it hit me. The door's unlocked. Paula's on the floor. Two children in the house. So I run in here. To see Heather. Make sure she's all right. Didn't dawn on me. She'd be gone, but... Guess what? Heather is gone. Now, at that point, did you look for your son? No, not yet. So I run back into the kitchen. And I really, I really, I mean, I, I, I shook her really good. And then she started stirring. And I said, where's Heather, Paula? Where's Heather? Where's Heather, Paula? And the last time I saw her, she was in the bassinet. That's what she was saying. She's in the bassinet. And I said, no, she's not there, Paula. Where's Heather? And then, and then she started mumbling something about, about 
taking out the garbage. See, she took yeah, out... Yeah, I took the trash out about 10.30. So you said the diapers were kind of smelly. Yeah, my daughter had a little bout with diarrhea, and I didn't want my husband to you have to smell. You didn't want me to have to smell them when I come home from work. Diapers were stinking up the kitchen, right? Right. Yeah. And so I took the trash out, and that's when... And that's when the bandito shows up. This roving Rumpelstiltskin has followed her to her new home and landed on her doorstep when she's taken the trash out. And once again, in a ridiculous manner, in an impossible way, he snatches a baby girl. And for the second time, he doesn't leave a trace of evidence. Not a laceration, not a fracture, no soreness from a blow that she says left her unconscious for 45 minutes. He doesn't even leave a bruise because he's the fairy tale man. It's a very interesting phrase, taking the trash out. Because five days later, Heather is found dead in a trash bag at the bottom of a trash can by a riverbank. And to Paula Sims, that's all her baby was to her. A piece of trash to get rid of. The killer, ladies and gentlemen, is the caretaker. The person who was supposed to protect and love her daughters unconditionally, ruthlessly, and cold-bloodedly took their lives. That is the last face that baby Lorelei and baby Heather saw. Mommy. <laughs> Mr. Groshaw. Ladies and gentlemen, let's just get something straight right now. Paula did not kill those children. She is innocent. She is the victim. There is absolutely no evidence that she killed anybody. None. None whatsoever. Now, the state tells you that there is no evidence of a kidnapping. Well, ask yourself one question. What evidence does a kidnapper leave? He comes in, grabs the child, he's gone. And because the police could not find evidence of a kidnapping, they had nowhere else to go but to the parents. And when they checked out Bob Sims' story that he was at work, well, that checked out, so they discounted him, and the only one left was Paula! Well, she is not the only one, because there is someone else out there right now who killed two children, and the police aren't looking for him, and they never did! Now, the burden of proof is on the state. We don't have to prove anything. They do. Besides, the state's theory is built on one thing, and one thing only, that this happened twice. Is that unusual? You bet it is. But that's not the question. The question here is, did Paula Sims kill her daughters? Mr. Weber, first witness on behalf of the state. Directing your attention to the winter of 1983, where were you employed? The uh, <clears throat> In-N-Out supermarket in Godfrey, Illinois. And during the course of your employment, did you ever have occasion to come in contact with Paula Sims? Yes, she worked as a checker. Hey, Stone! Wait up! Congratulations. On what? I hear you tying the old knot. Who'd you hear that from? A little birdie landed on my register. Think you can keep a secret around here? <laughs> Man. So you're gonna do it all, kids and the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to have some. What about you? Are you and Rob gonna Gosh, have... no, I can't stand kids. Oh, come on. Would you wanna have a daughter, a little girl? Especially not a girl. They're too much trouble. <laughs> anyway, congratulations. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, yeah. And what was your reaction to that? Well. Uh, I'm a person that really likes children, you know, so it, it just struck me as odd. No further questions. People's Exhibit Number 11, would you uh, please tell the jury what that is? That's a picture of the hill showing the skeletal remains including the spinal column and the skull of Lorelei. Did you observe what's in that photograph on June 24th, 1986? Yes. 
Yes, sir, I did. What else did you observe? Well, uh, the majority of the bones were found at the top of the hill. But as you went down the hill, less and less bones were found. The only conclusion I could draw was... Objection! That, uh, Your Honor, this witness is not qualified to offer a conclusion concerning the remains. Overruled. The witness can testify as to what he observed. It appeared, Your Honor, that an animal had been eating on the remains or, or skeleton and dragging it down the hill. There were so many tiny bones. They will never leave me. Never leave me. No further questions. Good job, Sheriff. Hey, Jimmy. I'll be. How have you been? Fine. Good to see you, Frank. Yeah, it's good to see you, too. Couldn't stay away, huh? Some of them you just can't shake loose of, you know? Yeah. Listen, you, uh, you want to get a beer or something? Sure. Good. It's not like I haven't seen people die. I've seen people die. I mean, I've been around death. Look at the human body inside and out. But to see that little thing laying there. No, I, I, I just couldn't grasp the fact that <laughs> you know what I was thinking about? What? At the time, I was thinking about my own girls. They were first born. But they felt like I just I just couldn't believe that was a baby there. Even though I, I knew it was. Yeah. I block most of that stuff out. Just block it right out. Funny how people are different. Prosecutors began their case with the death of Lorelei in Brighton in 1986. No murder charges have been filed in Lorelei's death, as the cause of death could not be determined. But prosecutors are using evidence from the first incident in an attempt to prove that lightning could not have struck twice. And Heather's murder could not have happened the way Paula said. The prosecution is pointing to a possible motive. The Sims didn't seem to like baby girls as much as their baby boy, Danny. Paula Sims could face the death penalty if convicted of the death of her daughter last year. In the courtroom today, two Look, FBI Danny. agents took the stand it's to mommy. fight on behalf of the prosecution. I work the nursery and OB floor. Are you familiar with Robert and Paula Sims? Yes, I took care of their baby, Heather. And I took care of Paula the night she had Danny. And uh, what did you observe regarding the chemistry between Robert and Danny? Oh, he was extremely happy with Danny. He was just all smiles, wanted to hold him all the time, had him all evening. And then I'd see him in the nursery window, just watching him. Did he react the same way to Heather? No. How did he react to Heather? He never smiled. Had no expression. He just never... I just never even saw him look at the baby. Now, in your experience in the maternity ward, is it at all unusual for a father to be thrilled in having a son, to be extremely happy about it? Oh, no. N no. No. In fact, that's kind of normal, isn't it? Yes, sir. <sighs> Don't, in fact, a lot of fathers express that they want sons. They even prefer sons. Yes, sir. Yes. No further questions? Mr. Weber? No further. So, I'm thinking of using... So, as your soul. Ah, it's delightful. Thank you. How's yours? We'll talk about it. 
But how's your conscience? Well, it's uh, it's as clear as the day. Thank Good. You. So you were thinking of using Doc, the videotape, Daniel's birthday party. It wasn't much of a party. Oh come on, Jerry, love that stuff. They'll eat it up. It shows Paula being the loving, playful, doting mother. Yeah, that's true. Of course, I'll have a lot of fun with the line, "Mommy's gonna get you." And the part where Danny drops his toy and stares at her, real apprehensive. Yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. By the way, you got Rumpelstiltskin wrong. What do you mean I got him wrong? I mean you got him wrong. Don't tell me I got him wrong. I played him in third grade. Yeah. And what do you remember? What am I, back in school here? I remember playing a dwarf called Rumpelstiltskin. I got a standing ovation. Is there anything else you'd like to know? The story? I mean, what's the story, Weber? You think I don't know the story? No. Okay, I'll tell you the story. He cuts a deal with a young bride to spin straw into gold. That's the story. And in exchange, he gets her firstborn. Mm, if I were you, I'd go back and reread that fairy tale. Why? Because the maiden wins. Yeah. Old Rumpel didn't get her kid. Well, he didn't in this case either. We'll see. Get you in court, counselor. All rise. Hear ye, hear ye. The Third Judicial Circuit Court of the State of Illinois is now in session. The Honorable Andreas Matosian, Judge Presiding. Please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Your next witness, Mr. Weber. Wendy McBride. So, you're in the hospital. You just had a boy, and Paula just had Heather. The two of you are chatting back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, during the course of this conversation, did Paula tell you about a previous daughter that she had? Yes. She told me about Lorelei. And what did she tell you about Lorelei? She told me that, um... <clears throat> uh, three years ago, while... Her husband was at work. She was either, I don't know, either taking out the trash or burning the trash. I can't pinpoint either one, but when she came back in the house, um, a masked gunman followed her and he knocked her unconscious. And when she awoke, Lorelai was missing. Now, Wendy, were you aware that that was not the story that she told the police back in 1986? No, I was not. And were you aware that that would be the story that she would tell about Heather six weeks in the future? Well, no, of course not. How did you learn of Heather's disappearance? Oh, my mother called me, because she knew I didn't watch the news. And so what was your reaction? I just thought, poor Paula, somebody stole her baby and she was taking out the trash again. <laughs> no further questions? Mr. Groshon? Yes. Now, Ms. McBride, this conversation that you had with Paula, the conversation that you say you had, this was on March the 18th, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Is that right? To my best recollection, yes. Yeah. Now, on the morning of the 18th, did you have a problem at the hospital? Say, for example, didn't you get dizzy and fall down? Yes, I did. Hit your head? I calmed my head. Yeah. Did you get hurt? Yeah. Well, I've been hurt worse, but... I mean, I hit a concrete floor flat on my face. Is that what happened? Yes, that's exactly what happened. Did you pass out? Well, I woke up on the floor. Did you lose consciousness or didn't you? I don't know. You don't know. Now, how long after the fall did you get the x-rays done? To my best recollection, it was right after. And after you fell, did you complain of headaches? Hmm. I've had headaches all my life, sir. Yeah. The question was, after the fall, did you complain of headaches? Well, yes, I'm sure I did have a headache. I had a bump on my head. Now, isn't it possible, Wendy, that you were the one who was confused, that you, in fact, confused the details of the Lorelei abduction with what the papers later said about the Heather abduction? I'm not a paper reader. <laughs> now, Miss Potter, how long have you known Paula? Well, me and Paula have been friends since high school. I knew her before she met Robert. Did you ever visit Paula in her home after she was married? Not when they lived in Brighton, but when they moved to Alton, I did. 
occasionally. Did you ever visit when Robert was around? No. Why was that? Well, he made me feel uncomfortable. He had these rules. Tell me, was there ever a time when Paula discussed these rules with you? And how she might have felt about them? Yes. The last time I visited her, she did. About two weeks before the Heather incident. And when you got there that day, what was Paula doing? She was waiting for me to come. Okay. Was she eating or drinking anything? No, I don't think so. What was she doing, Ruth? She wasn't doing nothing till I got there. Oh, please. Objection. This is totally irrelevant. Sustain. What did Paula tell you about the rules? I saw my aunt and uncle are coming from Missouri to visit Heather, right? And so I'm on the phone with her and Robert's saying, I mean, she's calling long distance from Missouri, right? Did I already say that? What? Huh? <laughs> All right. So Robert's standing right next to me and he's, he's breathing down my back and he's going, Rules, Paula, the rules. Better tell them about the rules. <laughs> so I'm going, sure, you can see Heather. Bring her a nice little gift. Mm -hmm. Be sure to leave your shoes at the door. <laughs> Gotta wash your hands as soon as you come inside. Do not touch the baby if you have a cold. And whatever you do, do not cough, sneeze, or sniff. You can't touch the baby. Nobody can touch the baby. So did they come? Yeah, sure they can. To my mother, they left the present with her. Mm -hmm. You still sleeping down here? Why did you put up with it? Why don't you help me fold this sheet? Maybe I'm just holding on to something that isn't there anymore. I don't know how much longer I can take it, Ruth. She said that if the sleeping arrangements didn't change soon, that she would have to get a divorce. And what exactly were the sleeping arrangements once Heather was born? Paula and Heather had to sleep downstairs. Paula on the couch and Heather in her bassinet. And where did Robert and Danny sleep? Upstairs in their bedrooms. And what happened to these sleeping arrangements after Heather's disappearance? Paula moved back upstairs with Robert. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to call Dr. Mary Case. Your Honor. Your Honor, the, uh, the defendant wishes to waive her right to be present for this testimony. No objection. That will be allowed. Please escort the defendant from the courtroom. Good move, Don. The ice face wouldn't look too good to the jury for this one. So, you perform autopsies. And what other areas of pathology do you specialize in? I hold board certification in three areas. Anatomical, forensic pathology, and also in neuropathology. And what is neuropathology? It's the study of the nervous system, specifically the spinal cord, muscles, and the brain. Now, would that give you information concerning someone who had been knocked on the head? Yes, it would. Uh, you, uh, Judge, may I have legal approach to the bench? You may. No. Judge, I strongly object any testimony by Dr. Case about neuropathology. The prosecution provided us with no discovery about this. They can't just drop it like a bomb. Look, it Judge, right here. It says neuropathology right in Dr. Case's CV. No, no, that and was the defense not was provided with this months the agreement. ago. Now, Don Groshon has talked to Dr. Case. They have exchanged letters. And you know he very even took well a deposition. that I'm objecting. And the state is not required reason. to tell the defense what questions to ask in a deposition. The objection is overruled. May I have a recess? You judge? can have a recess. No, Proceed. I, I would like to make a record. You can do that after she testifies. Proceed. Son of a bitch, you should have told me. Dr. Case, how was the body of Heather presented to you for autopsy? 
When I got the baby, the baby had already been taken out of the trash bag. It was presented to me nude, wrapped in a sheet. And what did the external examination reveal? That Heather was a well-nourished infant between six and eight weeks of age, weighing a little over 10 pounds. On the inner surface of the upper lip, there were three small lacerations. The body was very well preserved and externally showed no evidence of decompositional changes. And what did the autopsy reveal? The internal changes did not match the external changes. The organs showed a high degree of autolysis, meaning they were beginning to decompose. And what did that mean to you? It was my opinion that the body had been frozen in order to preserve it. What did you determine to be the cause of death in Heather Sims? Asphyxia. And it was my opinion that it was done by suffocation, meaning something was placed over the nose and mouth, causing the tears on the lip. Dr. Case, would you please tell the jury what air hunger is? If somebody obstructs your breathing, you naturally feel a need to breathe. You feel a burning in your chest. Or, or if you simply stop breathing and you hold your breath, that's air hunger. And how long would it take to smother a baby the size and age of Heather? To the point of death, that would take three to four minutes. To the point of losing consciousness? Around two minutes. Would a baby struggle? There would be a struggle in anybody that's not paralyzed. Even a baby will try to push away something that was trying to harm it. It would be kicking its legs like crazy. Turning your attention to your area of neuropathology. No, no, Your Honor, I object to any testimony in this field, and I ask to be heard out of the presence of the jury. No, I know what the motion is. Your Honor, I would object to your ruling without even hearing me. She may testify. You can cross-examine her. You can even bring in another expert. If it pleases the court, it's been a long... Proceed. If it pleases the court, it's been a long time since we've had a break, and I would like to be heard. You'll be heard when we break. Proceed. Dr. Case, assuming that someone had received a blow on the head which rendered them unconscious for 45 minutes, would that be a severe loss of consciousness? Five minutes would be severe. 45, that would cause serious injury to the brainstem. Would there be any memory loss? Yes, there would be what we call retrograde amnesia. And how much memory would you lose? You would lose the memory of the blow. You would lose as much as five to ten minutes preceding the blow. You may lose more. But Paula Sims states that she remembers the blow which left her unconscious for 45 minutes. Is that medically possible? That is impossible. Thank you. Now, Robert, is there any reason that on direct examination you had trouble remembering Heather and Lorelei's birthdays, but no trouble at all remembering Danny's? Danny's is the first day of the month. That's a little easier to remember. Now, you say that when Paula called you from the hospital after Lorelei's birth, she said she was sorry she had a girl. No. She said something to the effect that she wished she had had a boy for me. Was she sobbing and crying into the telephone? No. It was a little apology, because she knew that I did want a boy eventually to carry on the Sims name. Now, after Heather's disappearance, or uh, at least until she was found, you were pretty wrung out, right? I've been wrung out for four years. Yeah, just no energy, depression, just don't want to do anything, can't seem to get going in the morning, just, just worn out, right? Yes. Very tired. Yeah. And Paula was probably worse off than you, right? I don't know. Well? She wasn't in good shape. So why did you tell the FBI that on the night before Heather's body was found in a trash can, you had the best and longest lasting sex you ever had? Let me tell you something. Sex can be a stress reliever. 
We loved each other very much. I was trying to comfort her. She was trying to comfort me. I believe in my wife. It was the best and longest lasting sex you ever had. It was good. And this was right after... It usually is. Yeah, sure. And this was right after your second child had been kidnapped and taken to parks unknown by a gunman? And that's what you were doing? And that's what you were thinking about? What are we supposed to do? 24 hours a day. No further questions. <laughs> Mr. Groshaw, any redirect? No, thank you, Your Honor. You may step down. <laughs> I don't give a damn which one serves time for murder. That son of a bitch ought to be locked up. Let's take a recess for lunch. He's putting his pressure on him. Got him sleeping downstairs. I think it was real subtle, like, boy, I'm really getting tired of these dirty diapers around. Why don't you just get rid of them? Yeah, get the trash out of here. And when you get this straightened out, we go back to normal. And once it happened, I mean, once she did it, he's probably saying to himself, hey, man, she believed me. Oh, they're going, Polly, you screwed this up, hon. You got everything out of place, and I'm going to put it back in place. So this is what you'll say, and we'll stick to it till death do us part. Yeah. He probably didn't know what he was messing with when he played with old Paula's mind. Made her trip or trigger. Look, let's face it. You can't put some kind of rational thought process in these people's minds. You can only go so far with this deep psychological, philosophical crap. You reach a point, you can't go any further. Yeah. Some people are just evil. Paula, I want to talk to you about the fellow that you saw standing on your stairs in 1986 and about the fellow you saw in your backyard in 1989. Did you see any similarities in those two people? Definitely. It was the same guy. And how do you know that? I know that. Especially from his voice. If I heard it today, I could recognize that voice. On May 3rd, did you go over to West Alton and hide your daughter's body in a trash barrel? No, I did not. Did your husband, Robert, do anything in that regard? No. Did you kill either one of your daughters? No, I did not. I loved my daughters. And I still do. <laughs> Paula, I want you to take a look at the things in this box and tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury a little bit about them. Um, this is a doll that I saved from when I was a little girl. These are some dresses that my mother made for my doll. This is a pillow for the doll. And this is a dress that I wore when I was uh, 15 months old. And why did you save these things? I saved them for my daughter if I had one someday. I have a document. It's marked Defendant's Exhibit 119. What's that? That's me. When I was a little baby. In this dress. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I would ask you not to sympathize with Paula Sims and the act she committed just because she was once a little girl. Remember what that little girl grew up to be. 
Now you heard testimony that when Heather was born, Paula counted every precious little finger and every precious little toe. And I was wondering, when Paula Sims smothered that baby, and its chest was burning, and it was flailing its hands, and kicking its legs for two minutes before it lost consciousness, was she counting every precious little finger and every precious little toe then? A baby is a precious gift from God, not a piece of garbage. It is unfortunate that Paula did not take as good care of her own child as she took of this doll. And it is unfortunate that the people who weep in this case for baby Heather are the people of the state of Illinois. Now, I don't want you to convict Paula Sims on passion or prejudice. That's not right. And I don't want you to convict her because people are outraged by what she did. I want you to convict her because there is no reasonable doubt about her guilt and because what she did in her murderous, malignant heart is beyond statement. And I want you to convict her because a baby belongs in a bassinet. And not in a trash barrel. And you should convict her. And it is your solemn duty to convict her. Because she doesn't know the difference. I killed my girls. Both of them. I don't know why I did it. I didn't do it the way they said I did it. I was much more gentle than that. I guess it was just the pressure and the rules. <laughs> I should have left Robert a long time ago. But I didn't. I love my daughters. I still do. Oh, you've got to believe me. <laughs>